Hey guys, this is just going to be a quick video on how to assemble the BNVD1431 housing kit. Um, so here we have the BNVD1431 housing. Uh, here we have some objective lenses. We got some Photonis XD4 tubes. Uh, we got some objective lenses. Unfortunately, uh, the client here forgot to buy the uh, objective lens retaining rings, which aren't super important, but they're, it's something that you should have. Um, these are the tube retaining rings that are included with the BNV, BNVD1431 uh, because the tube retaining thread here is a little bit off spec, so they include their own, which is good. Um, unfortunately, this is a slightly older kit that doesn't have light pipes. Uh, they also use proprietary light pipes, um, but it's also not super important. Current kits do come with light pipes. Uh, light pipes just give you the red indicator light when you turn the unit on or off or when you're programming the unit. Here we have some upgraded screws because the, qual the quality of the screws uh, that come in the 1431 are not very good. And in my opinion, it, it kind of cheapens the look. And it's, ni it's just nice to have better quality screws that um, are sized properly and, you won't, and won't strip out on you. Um, here I have a tool that I made and 3D printed for the objective lens retaining ring. Here I have another tool that I designed and 3D printed. Um, for these tube retaining rings. Here I have my 1.5 millimeter Allen key, a 2.5 millimeter Allen key, some microfiber cleaning tips, a very small flathead for adjusting the uh, infinity stop rings, and some Teflon grease. Oh, and I also have a large Phillips screwdriver. Now, for anyone that's ever worked on a binocular housing before, typically um, fixed gain binocular housings have these tabs that go this way uh, in from here, and that allows you to just slide the tube in. Now, with the BNVD1431, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly, but you have two pins, one here and another one right here. And because they're pins that go straight down into the uh, cylinder of the housing, um, if you just plop, try to plop a tube in, you're going to bend them and you're going to break it. So the difference between this housing and most other binocular housings on the market is in order to access the, in order to install the tubes, you're going to want to remove the pods from the bridge. So to remove the pod from the bridge, uh, you just remove these four screws, one, two, and three, four. So these are 1.5 millimeter uh, Allen keys that you'll uh, Allen head screws. Uh, the right pod and the left pod are identical, so it doesn't really matter if you swap the right pod to the left side by accident or something like that. There you go, the pods are removed. And you can see here, these are the uh, connector tabs that will contact the tubes. And you can see they're spring-loaded pin connectors that will break very easily if you assemble this incorrectly. Now, you're going to want to assemble the optics and the tubes into, into the pods before you put them back onto the bridge. The first thing that you want to do is take an objective lens, because that's what you're going to be installing first. You want to make sure it's clean. So these are these are new, so they should be okay. But I'm going to give them a quick blow with duster gas, and you're going to want to make sure that these threads have a bit of grease on them, as well as this O-ring. This O-ring um, will seal the unit and also provides resistance so that uh, the lens isn't free spinning. So I've already greased these, so I'm just going to slide them right in. Turn them around a bit. Make sure you spread the grease around. Uh, make sure that it feels smooth as well. Now, if you have objective lens locking rings, this is when you would stick them in here and then use this tool to thread them on. Um, objective lens locking rings thread onto the back of the objective lens right here uh, so that you cannot accidentally unscrew them too far. Um, so because this person didn't doesn't have them, uh, if he for some reason decides to unscrew his lens all the way like that, which you should never have to do, then you can unscrew the lens completely off. 
Um, the locking ring just makes it so that it'll only unscrew to about this point before it stops. So it's one of those things that it's good to have, but it's not absolutely necessary. So after that, the next order of business would be to install one of the tubes. So clean off most of the dust from this tube, and I'm going to plop it right in. Now you'll notice that um, it's hard to see, but at the top here, there's a small un alignment notch, and that alignment notch lines up with this notch on the tube. So you plop it in and that's the sound of it uh, lining up. Uh, once the tube is in there, you take one of these retaining rings, drop it in, use the tool. Now in order to line up uh, the threads, I back, back it off until it looks like it's straight. Right now it's still not straight. The threads don't feel aligned. I th think the threads are aligned, and then I can start screwing them in. You, you want to make sure that you're not going to cross thread these, because that's uh, going to be an expensive mistake. There we go. So the ring just screws in there and keeps the tube in place. I forgot to mention that if you have light pipes, you actually um, install the light pipe first and then the retaining ring goes on top. The light pipe will just be a plastic piece that goes here and it has a tab that it protrudes this way so that um, the red light indicator here will uh, light it up and uh, transmit light into the ocular lens so that you can see um, uh, a a red light when uh, the unit's turned on, off, or being, or being programmed. So again, alignment notch. Actually, I'm going to click it first. You also want to make sure you don't over torque these. But, it, but uh, it also has to be tight enough that the tube's obviously not flopping around. This feels tight, so I think we're good here. Um, next, you're going to want to install your ocular lenses. You're going to want to take some grease. and make sure that you have a l just a tiny little bit on the ocular lens thread right here. And then what you also want to do with your uh, ocular lens itself, you want to slightly unscrew the lens and make sure that this o-ring here also has some grease on it. But make sure that you um, don't unscrew it so far that uh, the lens cell pops out of the assembly uh, because that can happen. Okay, so after this, screw the lens cell back into the tube. And you can assemble. Now 
Now, um, because of how fine these threads are, I always go back a few turns until I feel the threads click into place, and then I can screw it in. Because you absolutely do not want to cross thread these. This one's a little tight because sometimes the threading on the BMVD 1431 is a little bit off spec, but it will thread in far enough that you can use it no problem. So this one threads in a little better than that. Um, typically what you're supposed to do is um, once you have the lens set right, uh, you got to collimate them later. Well, once you collimate them you, and you set, set the position, this is the ocular lens locking ring. And you generally have a tool that will uh, unscrew it. Sorry, not unscrew it, but uh, you back the thread off and it'll lock against the lens here. What I typically do is I back it off until it makes contact, back off that lens a bit, turn that in, and then you can just lock the lens into the into the retaining ring. Now that we've put these pod assemblies back together, we can reattach them back to the bridge. So you can take one and make sure that these pin connectors line up with the tabs on the tubes. So it looks like it's fine. I'm going to hold it in place, make sure you have everything lined up, make sure the gasket is in place. Um, this thing is the gasket, the, the seal. So make sure everything's lined up, lined up. And then I'm going to be using my upgraded screws. They're just uh, better quality um, 1.5 millimeter socket, socket head screws, whereas the uh, other ones are button head. Now I recommend doing one side and then while holding it on tightly so that there's no stress, well very little stress applied when you're uh, turning the uh, pod up, put in the screw directly diagonal from the first one that you put in. And then you can do the other corners. I recommend doing these just lightly finger tight first until you have them all in. And whenever you rotate them, before you have the screws in, before you have all the screws in, make sure that you're holding uh, the assemblies together so that the rotational force goes to the articulating joint and not to where you want your screws. Now that we have all of our screws in, we can actually put the uh, tighten the screws a little bit. Don't overdo it because these are small screws and you're dealing with a plastic night vision housing. So just like finger tight is fine. There we go. Now the other screw set that I like to change out uh, on the housing, well sorry, there are two more sets of screws that I like to change out. I like to change out these screws, which are the same screws as here, um, for slightly higher quality ones. I find that the original ones are not sized consistently, and they strip out very easily because they're off spec. They also don't look very good because their coating kind of sucks. When you're changing these out, it's pretty simple. I would go one at a time. I don't want to actually take the cover off and affect the seal because I don't have to. And that's that for the body screws. Um, the other screw, the last screw set that I like to change out are these two Phillips head screws here. They look kind of cheap and mm, they're just not very good. 
Um, so what these two do is they adjust the amount of tension you have on the articulating joint. So what I have are 2.5 millimeter socket head screws that are much higher quality. When you remove the screw, make sure that you don't lose that bushing. Uh, probably not a good idea to lose that. You can screw that back in and then uh, adjust the tension as you wish. I recommend having your tension adjusted once you have your um, binoculars fully assembled because the amount of tension that you want uh, is going to be much higher uh, once you actually have them assembled and have weight in your pods. So the last step here would be to actually put a battery inside the housing and uh, test it. Well, you also need to set your lenses, but uh, I'm not really going to go into too much detail for that. You're going to want to make sure that you screw the battery cap on all the way because there is a plate at the end of the battery cap that has to contact the threads um, in order to complete the connection. So I'm just going to turn on the tubes briefly uh, because I don't want to damage them. But you'll see that tube powers up, and that tube also powers up. So we seem to be pretty good here. But uh, what you're going to want to do for, in terms of setting your lenses, um, just go outside, make sure that, uh, well, go outside, focus your ocular lenses, um, which are these, and then set your infinity stops, which are these things. So basically what you want to, what you want to do is find, figure out in what position uh, the lenses are focused for infinity. So say at this position, your left objective lens is focused for infinity, then what you want to do is move the infinity stop color up to the position where it stops it. So like right here, when I focus for far away, it'll stop here at infinity. So once you have that set, you take your small flathead and you're going to want to lock the small set screw right here. Don't do it too tightly um, because the body here is kind of thin. And if you do it too far, it can protrude and affect the function of the uh, objective lens threads. One more thing that I forgot to mention is um, once you have the unit assembled, uh, if you have the tools to purge it, great. If not, mm, some people think it's super important, some people don't. Um, but the purge valve is located here. And you just uh, unscrew this little flathead screw that has an O-ring seal in it. And that'll, act, that'll allow you to purge the unit if you have the tools to do so. Just showing that the 1431 works. And that's a quick overview of how to assemble the BNVD 1431 housing kit. Um, I hope you guys found this video helpful, and uh, have fun building. See ya.